So we've been in this series, Loving Generously, the last number of weeks. So this is actually the last message in the series. I want you to know next week we will watch the last of the many movies and how things turn out for the Donovan family. For the last of these messages, I, I wanted to have us think a little bit about how we're doing in our faith journey. How, how are you doing as a Christian? How are you doing as a follower of Jesus? So one way you might think about this is to reflect on our mission statement and our mission strategy. Our mission statement, you hopefully know, helping people grow with Jesus, also has built within it our strategy of how to help people grow in faith. And I often refer to the posters from a previous worship series uh, to break that apart into the strategy. So how are you doing at gathering people into church? Are you inviting others to come and be part of a faith community either here or elsewhere? Are you encouraging people on their, their faith journey? How are you doing at your relationships? We're coming just off of Thanksgiving. Sometimes that strains and tests our relationships a little bit. Are you encouraging and loving and blessing your family? this church community, the people in your neighborhood, people in your workplaces, friendships? Are your relationships being a blessing is a question you could ask. Or the third part of, of our strategy, observing faith practices. Uh, how are you doing at growing deeper with God in terms of faith practices? What's your prayer life like? Are you reading scripture occasionally? Are you coming to worship as ways to grow in faith? Or the fourth part, how are you doing at working for God? How are you doing at living out your faith um, in real and practical ways? Living out what Jesus wants you to do in the world are all questions you could ask. And maybe have even thought about that as we've covered our mission statement at different times and in different ways. But here's maybe a question you've never thought about in terms of your faith. Does the world hate you? Does the world hate you because of Jesus? Our scripture lesson for today and the, the little mini-movie kind of raise an interesting question that sometimes because we're a follower of Jesus, the world hates us. Jesus said this to his followers. We're going to look at John the 15th chapter. And in the Gospel of John, there's this extended period where Jesus is spending time with his disciples. He knows that he is soon going to the cross. He is going to leave them, so he wants to prepare them. He teaches them. He prays with them. He prays for them. He uh, uh, says goodbye to them. And he warns them about the times to come. And because the Gospel of John is the, the latest written of the Gospels, by that I mean it was about 70 years between when John was written and when Jesus died, they had the most chance to see how the world was going to respond to new followers of Jesus. And so we find Jesus saying to them, if the world hates you, if the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. In other words, if you are my follower, if you are a follower of Jesus, then sometimes you're going to come into conflict and perhaps with hate from the world. It only makes sense that if Jesus himself was crucified, that, that, that folks hated him that much, then sometimes that will be our result as a follower of Jesus. He goes on, he says, if you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. In other words, if you know, you're just cruising along with the world and doing whatever the world's doing, the world won't have a problem with you at all. But you won't be following Jesus then. You'll be following the world. He says, because you do not belong to the world, because he's called us out into a different life, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. I'll say it again, you probably have never really thought about, I certainly haven't, that if the world hates you because of following Jesus, 
I want to reflect on that and think about that a little bit. Um, why the world hated Jesus and why sometimes if we are following him closely, that brings frustration in our world as well. I should highlight, though, before I begin, just because you're hated doesn't mean you're following Jesus. This is not an excuse to be a jerk. You know, they're just like, hey, I'm going to be a jerk and be rude and, you know, make trouble for people. Then the world will hate me and I'm doing good. No, no. What he's talking about, Jesus is, is being hated because we're living like him. We're doing our best to follow him. So why did, why did, why was Jesus hated is a fair question. We kind of peruse through the Gospels and we see the tensions between the world and Jesus rise. We notice some things. One of them is that Jesus hung out with the wrong people. He was with prostitutes and tax collectors and poor and the shut out and the wounded in his world. He went out of his way to spend time with those folks and the powers that be were not happy with that. Colleen preached a, a great message last week about the poor and, and reaching out and blessing. And sometimes that brings us into conflict. In the little mini movie, there was this, this uh, situation of how to care for and love people that others don't sometimes brings us into conflict with the world. It's worth noting when you look at this scripture passage uh, sometimes when I read a passage, I think, well, what, what prompted Jesus to go there or think that? If you read just before that text that I read from John, just before that, Jesus gave his command to love one another as he has loved people. Sometimes that sets us apart from the world. I know people and I know churches where they've gone out of their way to care for those who are hurt or wounded or poor or broken and that has brought them into conflict with their community or with those around them. So to be like Jesus is sometimes to care for those that others do not. We would also notice if we look through Jesus' life that Jesus kind of stood up to the powers that be, in particular the religious who were the, the powers in Judaism. Um, he was constantly battling with them and pushing back on their behavior. And sometimes for us to be uh, a follower of Jesus, we end up in the same place. Where we look at the way this world is run, the way things work, and we say, that, that is not what I think should happen as a follower of Jesus. I read a, a great article the other day that has had me thinking about this by a passionate Christian by the name of Jim Wallace um, was writing in the Washington Post about how, uh, particularly in government, but in many other places, there's an emphasis on wealth and power and sex. And Wallace writes, and that's the exact opposite that, of the journey of people of faith where we try and move away from those things. But sometimes when the world is focused on those things, we'll be in conflict with the world. It certainly set the powers that be against Jesus and led him to the cross. Ultimately, I think we could look at Jesus and say that, that Jesus was trying to bring what he thought God should do bring into a message. He was trying to bring God's word and God's message into the world. Um, sometimes that meant that he was uh, speaking the word of God, that is the, the scripture, and other times he was just speaking for God, trying to bring God's message into the world. Um, and that was not always popular. In fact, it guided him to the cross. And that's a challenging thing, when to try and speak a word from God into our world. And it will have its consequences. The fictional story um, lists up one illustration, but there are others that I know. I, I know a guy who in his work environment was asked to fudge some numbers, to lie about how the company was doing. And he wrestled long with hard with that and said, no, as a follower of Jesus, I, I can't do that. And he was fired and lost his good reputation because of doing what he felt God wanted him to do. 
I know the story of a student who started carrying her Bible to church and received all kinds of flack and difficulty from other students, but it was what she felt God wanted her to do. I know of a lady in her workplace who complained about the foul language that she found so distressing um, and pushed back on how people were speaking, did not win herself any friends in her office environment, but it is what she felt God wanted her to speak into that environment. I can resonate with the comment in the in the little mini movie that we don't want to be hated most of us want to be loved but if the choice is to be loved by the world and perhaps hated by god or to be hated by the world and loved by god the choice is pretty clear 